Good evening, my name is Mark Myers and I will be doing my presentation on doing business in the DPRK. The DPRK, or is sometimes known as North Korea. The DPRK stands for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The DPRK is located and bordered with Russia and China. It is above South Korea and it's the border that separates South Korea and North Korea is known as the demilitarized zone. It's the most heavily guarded zone in the world. I will be doing my presentation on doing business in this country. The leader of the DPRK, his name is Kim Jong-un. The capital of the DPRK is Pyongyang with an estimated population of 25 million people. I'm sorry, that's not right. The capital of DPRK is Pyongyang with 3.5 million people. The DPRK has the largest military in the world. And it is, the DPRK has a planned economy. This means that all resources are allocated th through the government. The main exports of DPRK are minerals, fish, agricultural, and textiles. The state owns all aspects of production. This means that all goods and services are produced through the government and they own a portion or all of all of their exports. The DPRK has maintained an isolated economy with the ultimate goal of re reaching self-sufficiency. The DPRK has maintained the most isolated economy in the world with the ultimate goal of reaching self-sufficiency. Okay, that's the first part. Do you think I look up from my papers too often? Okay, some things you might not know about the DPRK. The DPRK actually has the largest military in the world with roughly 25% of its population employed by the government. Uh, the DPRK, how to do business in the DPRK. Uh, some things that you might find yourself doing is that you'll be going out to lunch and you will be meeting these uh, prospective clients or pr prospective partners on a very personal level. They will go out for lunch in the village or the towns and you would be seeing maybe doing karaoke or even having drinks or anything like that with DPRK uh, officials, which could be present if it is a larger business or a more uh, uh, bigger business, but I'm not sure. Um, this is uh, largely done because gaining trust is one of their most uh, perceived values of when doing business. So it, to gain trust, you have to know them on a personal level. Okay. Women play a, a more traditional role, and by traditional role, I mean uh, you might be seeing them doing things that we were more commonly would see in the 1800s in the United States. Uh, the women mostly stay at home. Uh, they do work on occasion, but they are paid and uh, for they are paid lesser than their male counterparts. Uh, women are have a different education. So from the very early education, elementary school and middle school, uh, the, actually the education for males and females will start to differ. And you'll have males working more towards the physical activities and uh, work related. And the females will have activities related towards the home and family oriented. The DPRK did encourage women to join the workforce largely due to the uh, war efforts uh, after the, the Korean War. Uh, they actually had awards given to women to encourage women in the workplace. We'll move on to the next paragraph. Uh, women are starting to get more education in the DPRK. Uh, they're focusing on biology, medicine, and foreign languages. Because the DPRK has the most isolated economy, they have resisted a lot of cultural influence. And I believe that this has stumped them in a lot of innovation that could be happening in the country. They are making some efforts to bring outside influence in for uh, growth of business. Some of these will involve workshops, where they'll bring uh, Westerners, uh, they'll bring people from the Dutch communities and from other parts of Europe and they'll do work classes to try to teach the students to come up with innovative ideas. Uh, for instance, a professor at Pyongyang University showcased 
these students' ideas uh, for innovation. And these came to solar-powered roof tiles in the shape of uh, Korean fashion uh, tiles. So, and then also they had ideas for radioactive protective gear based on biology and science of shrimp and lobsters. But even with these startup uh, projects and university workshops, there is still some work and there needs to be a lot of innovation before before allowing full innovation to take place. Authorities only allow uh, entrepreneurship that does not interfere with the status quo, and this makes it hard for the private sector to grow. Still, Koreans are forced to find ways to come up with income, which is allowing some of the private sector to grow and a potential black market. This private sector makes up about 80% of uh, the local population's income which is almost contradictory, but because of some of these influences, like the military government, because of the government's influences on the status quo, no. because of these influences, it makes it hard for the private sector to grow. This makes many investors very wary of doing business in the DPRK. Some of these will play out to be risked. For most people, doing business in the DPRK is a risk. This is largely due to the unstable economy and the risk of government interference. The government has looked outside for entrepreneurship, but a lot of trade with other countries is curtailed by their nuclear amb ambitions. For instance, the United States has had a long-standing embargo with North Korea because of this. Okay, because of disproportionate military spending in the DPRK, this has caused uh, little growth in the private sector. Like I said, uh, this gives way to the black markets, which make it hard for investors to do business. Okay, this is another good point. Virtually all finances to do business comes directly from the government. Making finances for the private industry very difficult. Okay, so in conclusion, doing business in the DPRK is a large gamble. The risk involved in losing your investment keeps many entrepreneurs away. The risks come from the country's inability to innovate and cooperate with other countries. Because the DPRK is trying to be self-sufficient, they see little room to, to look for outsiders for win-win situations. I think the DPRK has potential and there is still hope for the country. Yeah. Because the DPRK is trying to be self yeah, you're right. We'll get it. Go ahead, Mark. I yeah. I think the DPRK has potential and there's still hope for the country. But with high risk and low reward, it makes it hard for entrepreneurs to enter the country to do business. That's it, Jay.